All righty. Jeff Ronnie here, the Bowl File Channel. I got the uh, got the old camera set up on a mini tripod here, and today, great angle, huh? Look at that. Check that out. Got a T-shirt with my own face on it. <laughs> Anyways, today I'm going to talk about solidified yolk syndrome. So in June of 2003. I did a write-up about solidified yolk syndrome, and that is when, this happens in a number of different snakes, but baby boas in particular, because that's what I do, sometimes are born with a large belly full of yolk. This happens to everyone. No one's immune. I know there are some of you big breeders that have never had a slug, never had a female that you tried to breed that that didn't or failed to produce babies, I know, every time, 100% success. But for those of us who are not 100% successful and sometimes have baby boas born with a big belly full of yolk, well, 20 years ago, next month, I wrote up the solution for this, and I called the problem solidified yolk syndrome. This was posted on Kingsnake, redtailboas.com, redtailboa.net. I mean, a number of different places way back in the day. You can find it if you look it up. But let me flip the uh, camera around here. All right, there. Now we're going to be checking out some babies that were born the other day with large bellies full of yolk. So these are all sharp albinos. Look at that big belly. These are sharp albinos and sun glows that have big bellies full of yolk. Let's grab this one, because this one has a particularly large belly to show you. So, baby boas come from an ova that's inside of the mom. So, it's basically an egg that's inside the mom without a shell with all of the ingredients it needs to develop a perfectly healthy baby. One of those ingredients is the yolk, what we call yolk, that the baby feeds off of. Well, sometimes babies are born and some of that yolk isn't used up and it ends up being sucked up and going into the belly through the umbilicus. There's the umbilicus, and that's what the uh, equivalent of a belly button is on a boa constrictor. So this yolk needs to be utilized by the baby. And if you provide the right kind of housing, you do this right, 98% of the time they will utilize all of this yolk to growing bigger and stronger so they're in better condition to live their life. That's an IMG. So typically, what I do is I set these guys up in a rack system. All right, back to my mug. I think I'll stay at this angle. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Anyways, I set them up in a rack system that is heated in the back. And this is how you help that baby, what I call, cook down that yolk that's in their stomach. If they don't digest that yolk properly while it remains soft it will solidify it will turn hard and then it will be next to impossible for them to digest it because they're just little tiny babies they're not big boas they're little teeny tiny babies so the way you set these up is you set them up in a rack that has a heated area that's up to 92 maybe 93 degrees at the hot end maybe even 94 at the hot end but they've got to be able to get away from that heat that's too hot for them to sit at 24 7 they would probably die so it, it's it's relatively dangerous if you don't give them a thermal gradient but if you set them up in a rack with the space in the back of the rack that's very very warm in the low 90s they will be able to digest all that yolk and utilize it and have it go into the muscle tissue, organs, bones, you know, all the things that baby boas need to grow. Now, what causes 
solidified yolk syndrome. Well, solidified yolk syndrome is when that yolk doesn't all get utilized and some of it starts to harden up or maybe a lot of it hardens up before the baby is able to utilize all of that yolk. That's bad when that happens. That's not necessarily fatal. I'm going to talk about how you can avoid or what you can do if it gets to that point. But you only have like a 50-50 chance if you get to that point. So when you have the soft yolk, you set them up in a rack that's really warm and allow them to thermoregulate. So at the front of the drawers I, are typically, in my case, the front of the drawer is going to be about 85 when the back of the drawer is 92, 93. So they can move to the front, at, which is 85, when they don't want to be on the heat. But babies with a big belly really favor the heat a lot. So when you go to check on them and touch them, you'll feel that they're quite warm. So what causes this yolk? Well, what causes the yolk is that the babies are not completely or fully developed to their maximum potential. So that's typically because the female was not given the opportunity to sit someplace where it is warm enough for those babies to be completely developed. However, it could also happen if the female, for some reason, gives birth a few days earlier than what we would consider to be optimal. Now in the wild, this probably happens in the wild too. The babies crawl off, find someplace nice and warm, cook down that yolk, utilize it. But in captivity, we've got to give them the uh, the best chance possible, and that is you have to keep them warm enough so that they can digest all that yolk. If you do not allow them to digest that yolk and it becomes solidified, there is a last-ditch thing you can do. And I've done this with not very good success. But uh, I would say a 50% chance that you can save the animal. It becomes very, very hard. You can palpate that lump out of the baby's stomach through its mouth. There are some videos online. I, actually, I'm going to try and put a video at the end of this where I did this once, if I can find that video. I just don't have any with a solidified yolk to, to do it on now, but I did this a couple years ago. So that may be at the end of this video. Hopefully, I'll be able to find that. But you palpate it out very gently. It takes a little bit of a firm movement to get it going, too. Uh, but you have to be, be can really, really cognizant of how delicate... The interior tissues are on a little tiny baby and you can squeeze it out of their mouth and it comes out looking like a hardened yolk thing and I've only had uh, I think I've done it like six times and had like three of them survive and three died within an hour after I did it so I was apparently rough on them and, and, and damaged something now there is another option you can do for this yolk situation you if you have access to a very large gauge needle, when the babies are first born and the umbilicus, umbilical cord is very soft, you can go in through that umbilical, which is what, this is how I used to do it before I figured out keeping them warmer. And you can insert that needle so that you're just in the pocket where the yolk is, and then you can extricate it by pulling back on the plunger on your syringe I would. You can't do this with a small gauge needle. You need a very large gauge gauge needle, like a horse needle. Uh, I, that's not that's a scientific term. A very large needle. Another thing that I have used is a bird feeding tube. A bird feeding tube will fit right on a syringe, and it has a bulb on the end, kind of a chrome bulb with a hole in it. And it's a little bit tricky to work it in there, but you can work it right in the umbilical while it's still soft get it into the space, then you're, you're very unlikely to cause any harm because it doesn't have the sharp point that you have with the needle. And then you pull out the plunger on the, pull back the plunger on the um, syringe and you can suck that yolk out. There's a couple other options. So I'm just giving you, giving you everything I can think of, all the ways that I had dealt with it in the past. But the best way is to just set them up in a rack that's 92 to 94 degrees at the very back of the rack 85 or so at the front the babies will figure it out they'll figure out the perfect temperature to sit themselves at so they can uh, digest that yolk 
and they'll perfectly be or they'll be perfectly fine so i anticipate not having any issues with these babies second i i don't anticipate having any issue with these babies this is not as bad as i've seen for sure i've seen bigger bellies than this but that's definitely a big belly and just keep them warm that is the solution to what I wrote in June of 2003 to be solidified yolk syndrome. Good luck!